In this lesson, we're going to look at a specific type of exponential problem called half-life. Um, so it's very common terms associated with exponential decay. Uh, it is still an exponential model. So remember, our exponential model is starting amount A times the common ratio, and X is the number of times we're going to do that. So half-life is a specific type of model um, where the common ratio is always a half. And half-life means that you have a uh, some sort of substance that decays uh, to half its original amount over a sp specific amount of time. You might see it quite a bit with isotopes. Um, Carbon-14 is a common um, isotope used for dating fossils. So because they know the half-life of carbon-14, they know how long it takes to reduce in half, they can take a fossil, measure how much carbon-14 is left, and then figure out how old the item is. So that's a one common use of half-life. So the formula is the same as an exponential model, except for we use different um, letters. So A is the end amount, so that's our Y. A initial, so you'll see the zero as a subscript, that means initial amount, so that's your starting amount. Uh, the common ratio is specifically a half, and then the x is replaced by t over h, and that's because um, the number of times it reduces in half depends on two things. It depends on how much time has passed and how long it takes to reduce in half. So for example, if you had a half-life of 2 minutes and 10 minutes pass, then 10 minutes divided by 2 means that the substance would reduce 5 times. So in order to find out how many times it reduces by a half, we have to consider not only the time that has passed, but also how long it takes to reduce in half. Okay, so in this example, it says half-life, so I know it's a half-life question. So I know the end amount is equal to the starting amount times the common ratio a certain number of times. Um, the original sample is 100 grams. It is a half-life. The time that has passed is 15.2 days and it takes 3.8 days to reduce in half. So we would put 15.2 uh, over 3.8. So if you're going to type this all into your equation, make sure you put this in brackets so that it does it in the correct order. Um, so I would do 100 uh, bracket 1 half or 0 0.5 to the power, and then I would put my exponent in brackets so that it divides the numbers before it does the power. And my final amount left is 6.25 grams. So just a quick mental check. 15.2 divided by a 3.8 is 4. So it's going to reduce in half 4 times. Okay, let's put that, we'll just add an extra step here. So the original amount was 100. It's going to reduce in half four times because 15.2 divided by 3.8 is 4. And our final answer was 6.25 grams. So think about this. A half divided once is 50. 50 divided once is 25. 25 divided once is 12.5. And then one last time is 6.25. So that's basically what you're doing. You're reducing the 100 in half four times. So final amount is 6.25. We don't want to do it in steps. We want to do it with an equation. Um, so we are going to use that formula. Um, sometimes it might ask you various parts. It might ask you for the final amount. It might ask you for the initial amount. It might ask you for T or it might ask you for H. So let's see what we're given here. In this example, we know the half-life. 5.26. Uh, 50 grams are left. That's my final amount. It takes uh, time passed is 15.78 years and it wants to know how many grams were in the original. So we're trying to find the initial 
value. So we'll write out the formula. Uh, final amount is 50. We don't know the starting amount. We know the common ratio. We know 15.78 is time and 5.26 is the half-life. So I could divide 15.78 by 5.26. That works out to be 3. 1 half to the power of 3 is a half times a half times a half. So 1 over 8. So if I cross multiply to solve, so I'm going to cross multiply 50 by 8. And that is 400. So the initial amount was uh, 400, and it reduced in half, and that's grams reduced in half three times. And that makes sense because 400 divided once is 200, divided twice is 100, divided three times is 50, which was the final amount. So that checks. Okay, in the last example here, we have an initial amount of 100 grams. We have a final amount of 6.25 grams. The time passed is 10.8 days. And we want to figure out the half-life. So final amount is 6.25, initial amount is 100. 10.8 is time passed, and we're looking for h. So we can't multiply the 100 by the half because the half has an exponent attached to it. So I'm going to divide by 100. If I can reduce to a fraction, I will. Uh, or I could use a decimal, it doesn't really matter which, but 6.25 reduced by 100 is 16. So it would be 1 over 16 reduced as a fraction. And that is makes it easier to solve because I know 1 over 16 is a multiple of a half. I know 2 to the power of 4 equals 16, so 1 half to the power of 4 would equal 1 over 16. And then we go by solving our exponential equations. Once that base is the same, we don't need the base anymore. So the exponents are equal. I'm going to cross multiply to solve. So 4 times h equals 1 times 10.8. And then I'll divide by 4 to solve for h. So we're just cross-multiplying to solve. And it is 2.7. So whatever the time is, the half-life would be in the same unit. So 2.7 days is the half-life.